All right, guys, just give me one second whilst I make sure that everything is, in fact, uh, you know, working. This is going to be another art stream. So hang tight. You're receiving my content. I see that I do have audio over here. I just want to make sure because, you know, my track record. All right, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Hey, guys, Courtney Mermaid here, and welcome back to my channel where I bring you mermaid-related content to help you live life so mermaid. Oh, it's been an interesting start to the day, but here we are, another art stream. Um, I don't have anything planned. Who's excited about that? What I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I do kind of have something planned. What I was thinking was that we could look at maybe some tips and tricks for drawing mermaid tails. I know that um, you guys wanted me to do like an actual mermaid tail drawing tutorial, which I will do. But I thought today could be like a Q&A. You guys ask me your tail designing related questions. It can be anything. Um, any questions you want me to answer about the program that I use, um, techniques, the whole nine. So get your questions ready because uh, let's, let's answer them all. Also, I noticed that despite the fact that I pay for my music and I'm only using music that I'm allowed to use on YouTube, uh, a large portion of last week's video was muted. Um, now, I don't know if that's a YouTube thing. Could very well be, because that's what YouTube likes to do. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the fact that my mic only picks up what it thinks is speech. So it could be like it didn't quite hear the music, so it was trying to tune it out. I know that my phone does that, and it's very annoying and kind of weird. But... Um, yeah, so I don't know that we're going to do music <laughs> today. I love having music on in the background, but I also like it when you guys can actually hear what I'm saying. So there's like parts of that last video that are just like... And it's like, well, who's going to gain anything from that? <sighs> so the other problem is, right, I only have three ports. One for each camera and one for my iPad, so I can't actually plug in my beautiful Blue Yeti um, microphone, so I can't actually plug this in, which is just a shame, because here it sits, and it's just like, hey, mom, like, how's it going? Give me some love. Anyway, um, we are gonna get the iPad going in just, a, like, a wee kind of, like, a second here. We've got Alfie in the corner. Um, there we go. Here we are. I'm going to say hi to a few of you guys. How is everybody today? Oh, all my fishes in the house. Look at all you guys. Um, I tried to make a hair clip with E6000 glue, and it is looking more like a mess than a shell hair clip. Do you have any tips uh, on how to use E6000 glue correctly? First of all, safety precautions. Um, ventilated area. Get a couple fans going if you need to, if you can't get the air circulating with the windows open. I throw a fan on just, you know, good measure. <coughs> As a bird person or ex-bird person, I used to be um, really paranoid about E6000 glue. Gloves, which I almost never use, which is terrible, but you should use. So don't be stupid like me, wear gloves. Um, and if you, if you have a respirator or, um, yeah, just a respirator, wearing one of those is a good idea too. That is the safety side of it. Um, when it comes to E6000 glue, what is he doing? Seriously, what are you doing? You're such a weirdo. When it comes to E6000 glue, very often less is more. And because the tube will continue to spew out glue as you go, I recommend having some Q-tips. I recommend having a knife that you are just going to dedicate to this because that glue did not come off. I've got two knives that I destroyed because the glue, I just can't get it off. It's gross. Um, and, and some toothpicks. Um, I will also recommend a couple of clamps. Um, just make sure that your clamp never actually comes into contact with the glue or you're going to end up gluing the clamp. <laughs> I've done this. Don't laugh. Um, gluing the clamp to whatever it is that you're making. Um, and do little bits at a time. E6000 glue actually takes quite a bit of time to cure and to actually harden enough that stuff will stop sliding around like a big gooey mess. So that is an important thing to take into consideration. Um, doing stuff in like pieces and planning in advance. Like Plan out the whole hair clip first, take pictures of it, put your pictures up on the side, and then do it in like chunks. Like I'll glue, um, I've got a couple of hair clip tutorials actually floating around on the uh, YouTubes. And um, making sure so that 
okay, the shell's going to go here, my, my um, felt is going to go here, the actual clip attachment's going to go there, where's the seaweed going to go, how are you going to layer it, and all that kind of stuff. I hope that answered your question just a little bit. It, like E6000 glue, is an absolute pain in the fin to use, but it does work, like, really well for making hair clips. Like, I have um, my hair clips that I use just hot glue, like, they hold together okay, it's not amazing. The care clips that I've made with E6000 glue don't come apart at all. Like, it's, like, I've been rough on them. Like, I've tossed them and I've, I've scraped them against stuff and they hold together really, really well, so. <coughs> that would be awesome. So glad uh, I can make it to this one. Yeah. How do you make scales for your tails? Okay, that's a good question. Let's answer that one. Uh, just a sec. Hey, girl, glad to see you live. Happy I could tail flop on time. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, scales for your tails. Well, how would I actually be able to open the program for starters? Um, scales in Photoshop are going to be different than I do scales, um, on here. There's a, a lot of different ways to do, uh, I want to say the current sketch. Don't laugh. I've got some really goofy noodles and doodles on here. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do scales in, um, just try to find some examples. So you can do them like I did on this Alfie piece where I did them just like a highlight and a shadow versus um, actual like defined scales. And then there's different shapes that you could that you can choose for your scales as well. And like getting creative and, and doing your research first to see what you want to come out with. Like I'm uh, in the process of designing one right now that's going to be like I do one scale at a time, basically, um, especially for the more detailed scales, like the, the ones that I did on the siren tail. Um, I did one scale and I designed it all the way through like shading, the texture, the lines, the detail. It was a nightmare. I'm so glad it's over and I never have to do it again. There you go. And then I end up duplicating it and make just a pattern with it to make a full, a full sheet. Um, for like the, the tails and stuff that I do on, um, in Sketchbook Pro. So this is what the program is. This is Sketchbook Pro and, uh, it's on my iPad Pro and I have, I think the last generation before... The generation where they came out with the pen that charges off of the like just touching the iPad. So I'm not sure which I could look it up what generation this is. <laughs> and I don't actually think Sketchbook Pro is called Sketchbook Pro anymore. I think it's just called Sketchbook um, on the App Store. I don't know. It is also available for Android devices. It's not just iOS. So you will be able to find it. You can also use it um, on your on your smartphone. I know a lot of people who do little doodles and stuff on their smartphones. Um, I've used it on my Samsung tablet, I used it on my phone, I've used it here. And you can get different pens and stuff that um, mimic the, the, mimic like your fingers touch. Electric. Huh. Uh, and you can use that on there. It won't have as fine a, a nib as these ones do, as the actual pencil, the Apple Pencil does, but it's still, it's still really, I've seen some people do amazing stuff with that, so really cool. Hello everyone. Why was I not informed that you went live? Because because YouTube hates me, just like a dot, I think. They thought, so the I have a, a video that's gonna go up tomorrow showing off how I did this one, which is gonna take a sec to load because the file's pretty big. And I want you to tell me once this loads, what about her? says not advertiser friendly. We're not showing any boobs. We're not showing any anything inappropriate. She's just a cutesy little, not quite anime, Disney looking little princess person here. And they're like, not suitable for all advertisers. And I was like, you know what? I am going to literally eat my, and you know, I know what it was too. So here's a, here's a pro tip. <laughs> I had only half drawn her in. At that point, um, the thumbnail that was auto-selected only had, it didn't have her chest, wasn't like totally painted in yet. And I was like, what, were you assuming I was going to draw like nipples on there or something? Like, can I even say that without getting demonetized? Like, I don't even know. It's just, it's anatomy, guys. It's anatomy. Like, can we all just have a deep, just like a, a moment of appreciation for that? Anyways, um, it's been since re-monetized, so it'll go up. Not tomorrow, but Friday. I think I said tomorrow, but I meant Friday. Okay, so 
So um, for those of you just joining us, please feel free to ask me your tail designing related questions and I am going to answer them and perhaps noodle a little bit whilst I wait for said questions. So any kind of questions that you guys have that I can answer in sketchbook. So um, obviously not like printed mermaid tail specific, but just like how you get the concept going, really get the design um, going and whatnot. Um, hello everyone. Hey Courtney, I have a question for you. What do you think about Fin Fun Mermaid Tails? They're products of starter mermaids or just mermaids in general? I think they're great for a starter mermaid and I think they're also great for the hobbyist mermaid. I don't know that like, here's where it gets gray, okay? This is where it gets really gray. I feel as though, um, people sometimes forget that there is more than one way to be a professional mermaid. Like, Look guys, I'm not swimming in a tank, I'm not in the aquarium, I'm not doing all these things, but I'm a professional mermaid. I am making my living right now doing all these things with mermaid tails and being a mermaid and posting videos and making tails and this whole thing. So I think like if you were somebody who was say like reviewing Fin Fun products, you know, then it's like maybe a different a different thing you're doing that, maybe you're making money off of that on your YouTube channel and that kind of um and that kind of uh, thing. So I don't know, but I think overall, like in terms of their product, I feel like they're pro like they put so much effort into their brand, into their message, into their product. Like it's just the only thing that I am always a little bit down with is that there's such a little bit see through. But on that note, who's excited for a segue, you guys? Okay, can you feel it? It's coming. Hang on, hang on. Here it is. Okay. Um, I just came out with a line of uh, a variety of different skin tones, nude bathing suit bottoms, and a variety of skin tones. I know I just said that, but I'm very excited about this. So I think I've got nine different options right now. This is all available on shoppingthroughthemermaid.com. And I've also got it set up now because I wanted to have it so that it was like a bikini option if you wanted to get the crop top and then the bottoms. I've done it so if you add crop tops and whichever bikini bottom, it doesn't have to match, whichever one you want, you will get 25% off the bikini bottoms to make like the, the you know, your, your ideal mermaid bikini. So if you wanted nude bottoms instead of some of the other colored ones, then you'd, you'd you know. All the patterns are up, uh, I think right now. Did I actually finish that before I went live? I hope I did, because that would be really embarrassing if I sent you over there right now and you were like, hey, Courtney, none of your stuff's actually up there. Yes, they are up there. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so that's the only thing is like, you might have to be a little bit creative on how to hide your bum in your mermaid tail. <laughs> and, you know, even nude colored bottoms aren't perfect, but it definitely is better than wearing like bright blue bottoms or like black bottoms or like whatever color. You know, um, my goldfish tail, like I always swim in black bottoms, like even in my lightest colored mermaid tails because my tails aren't see-through. Thank goodness for that, right? Um, but in my painted tails, they are a tiny bit. So I didn't notice it for the longest time and I'm swimming in goldfish and I'm like, looking at the video afterwards, I'm like, I think you can see the bottom of my bum right there. What's that? That's good. That's what you want. Meh. Um, but overall, I will say again that I do, I do really like Fin Fun. I really do recommend them. I've seen their products up close. Um, short of them being a little see-through, I think they are a great starter mermaid tail. And I don't think all of their colors are see-through. I think there's just some that tend to be more prone to being a little bit translucent, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was the long, like, go around to get to the point of saying, yes, Fin Fun gets two thumbs up for me. Okay. That's, woo! <laughs> Um, I'm dabbling on a Venom mermaid tail design I kind of like and hate it at the same time. Hey, my, my fishy, we are all there. I tell you, like right now I'm sitting here and I'm noodling just legs and I'm like, oh my God, these guys, they don't judge me. They're not going to think I'm very good at this. Um, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, you know what, when you're in the middle of it, sometimes you just can't see, you just can't see the bigger picture. And I will say, like, I don't think she sees any of my content ever. Um, Alexi, if you ever somehow come across a live stream of mine, that was the biggest, best thing you ever told me. Like, anybody at any job has ever said to me to look at the, the biggest of the big picture. Just to, to see 
the 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 thing is a whole instead of just the little pieces that maybe you don't like right now do you know what i mean and that that impacted me like a huge amount you ever have like somebody in your life who just says the right thing to you and at the time maybe it stings a little bit and you're like oh i don't really understand why you're telling me this and then it comes up later in life and you're like oh <laughs> like i know now i know these things so yeah i don't know that she she sees any of my content i think she knows what i do but um but she was a, an amazing um, producer that I had um, on a project and just loved her so much. It was just a dream to work for and I, I miss her and I miss working for her. If I ever had the opportunity again, man, I probably would. I'd be like, let's do this. Let's collab on something. <laughs> um, ha, sometimes being sick isn't so bad. I finally made it. Yay! I'm sorry that you're sick though. <laughs> yay that you're here. Just not yay that you're sick. Um, a friend of mine was curious if you have ever done actual fins for your tail. Yep, I sure have. Um, I know you have drawn them in on the print, but I was curious if you've ever done fins that stick out. I've done vinyl fins, uh, and I did, I think my very first tail had, um, uh, spandex fringe, a lick down the dorsal, but I've not done, I've not done printed, um, uh, ones yet because I'm not super, super sure, like, where I'm going with that, and I don't know. We're right, you know what we're gonna see, guys. It's gonna happen. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, like, what, what am I gonna do for a fluke here? I kind of want to do something that like has like a different shape. Ooh, this could be interesting. Um, yeah, good, yeah. Quest good question so far, you guys. Um, also yeah. heads up, I may or may not be interrupted by a plumber. Um, we've sprung a leak. My mom also sprung a leak in her, uh, like, water tank thing. We're not having a very good morning, the, the, the mermaid household, between, between her place and the leak that the plumber never showed up. So I don't remember, guys, I think I was live streaming that last time. The plumber never actually came. So super impressed with that company. Um, like, really would love to do a video just complaining about it, but I'm not sure any of you would really care, but... But it's kind of uncool to say you're going to do something, never show up, and never follow up. Now I could have phoned and been like, hey, angry, angry person, but like I'm pretty pissed about the whole thing, so I'm not really sure I want to subject people to just my rage. I kind of want to do like ridiculous spins off the sides. I keep thinking about Spongebob whenever you say Bikini Bottom! Yeah! I love Spongebob. Spongebob's awesome. Oh, it was your turn to take the dog for a pee? Oh, geez. I was really fortunate. Eric hasn't been feeling that great. Um, so I've had I've had some company the last, last little while. Um, but thank goodness, yesterday, I don't know if you saw my Insta stories, what happened, like, it, it got really bad. Like, he had to pretty much carry me to the tub. And my legs had just, like, solidified. And then last night when I was sleeping, um... <laughs> I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, my leg is gone. Like, I can't, I can't feel anything. My, my right leg was completely gone. So from the knee down, I had no feeling. I couldn't move my toes or anything. And I was freaking out, guys. I was like seriously wigging out. And um, it did eventually come back. But then of course, like when something's fallen asleep and then it comes back too, you get like pain plus the pain that like I had been having already. And it was like, it was just just no you know oh Alfie like how come you always manage to mess up the camera angle like I spend so much time trying to organize you want some chicken that's a chicken it's like oh she threw something at me guys also hopefully I've solved the lag issue I um I have everything set to maximum now and hopefully we're not having as much lag because that was another thing that happened last week was lag all over the place um, I can't say how many stories I've heard about plumbers not showing up for appointments. Sadly, it's a thing. I know. I just can't, like, you have to know, guys. I'm the girl who shows up 40 minutes early for an appointment and will just sit in the car or walk around the block or get a tea or something. Because I can't be late for things. Now, I do have, like, actual, like, diagnosed issues that revolve around time. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, like, not a lot I can do about this, unfortunately. But um, do you ever just feel like sometimes it would be nice if the rest of the world just cared just like a tiny bit more than they actually do? I don't know. Is this just me? This could very well just be me, but I don't know.
Sorry, I'm just gonna line this up quick. Yoink! So what other tail making or uh, mermaid tail design related questions have you guys got? And it can be any, anything that you can think of. Um, things that I try to avoid are getting too tight into the design right away. Like you can see that my first version of this is just like rough AF. Like it's not, this isn't even like a cohesive anything. This was just sort of an idea that I kind of threw down. I was like, well, maybe that could be something cool. Maybe. I don't know. It could be okay, right? You know? I just saw the nude bottom saying, Cordy for the color diversity. You're very welcome. I, I, what I did was I looked up um, Pantone colors for it, and I wanted to get a good variety that would hopefully show up. Like the Pantone colors I picked because they print as, like they print like accurately, I can say like as accurately as possible, you know. Um, but I wanted to do a variety, and of course if I get any more like requests that people want to send me like, hey, I really need color, like bottoms in this like skin tone or this color or whatever, um, you can always just shoot me an email and let me know and I can always add that to the collection because I wanted to have more than just like two or three, you know? I, I wanted to just variety, you guys. It's the spice of life, okay? But these are the bottoms. Um, do I actually have mine here to show you guys? Let me just grab them really like super, super fast. Okay, let's look at Alfie while I'm, hang on. Alfie can. Let's Alfie can this. Alfie's like, wait, where is she going? Stay. <laughs> she's like, whoa, there she is. She's back, guys. She's back. Did you see her? Did you see her? She's just there, guys. Oop. <laughs> Psych. Um, okay, so these are what the bottoms uh, look like. And they sit high on the bum and they also sit like I'd say like right so my belly button is like here they sit sort of like right under my belly button and, and supposedly they do that on most um people according to my manufacturer now they are a little cheeky however it's like a comfortable cheeky I'm not somebody who who likes like anything showing off my bum like I'm just not a fan um but I feel quite comfortable and confident in these which is kind of nice I've also worn these under a mermaid tail, and I feel like I actually look a little bit more or less, like, my other um, bathing suit bottoms cut into, like, we used to joke about this in life drawing, the love handle muscle. It's a joke. It's, like, the stupid thing that we used to say. But, like, right here, they used to, like, cut in and create, like, that shape right there. And it used to bug me because my tail sits up higher than my old bottoms. But my tail and these bottoms actually sit quite nicely together. So I am wearing these in my latest swimming video. You can't see them because, of course, my tail's not see-through. But they're, um, they are there. And you can see that I feel like it's a little more flattering or it's holding me in a little bit better. And I feel a little bit more comfortable in them than I do in my regular bottoms. So that was a nice surprise. I honestly wasn't sure, which is why I've waited so long. Because I wanted to wait for mine to come in before I could be like, yes, these are the best ever. Um, but I've also worn them without a tail and they are really comfortable to swim in and they don't like flop around like my old bottoms. I feel like I'd have to, you know, I had to wear a mermaid tail with them or I couldn't wear them swimming by themselves because literally they would just slide down. <laughs> Not cool. Um, okay. Let's see. When, when Alfie barked, my girl Dolly started looking for her. Oh, that's so cute. I will always be um, early because I am so bad at time management. Yes. I can't help it. I have to be early for things, guys. It makes me so nervous. This is my breakfast, by the way. <laughs> um, what do you think about Mirbella Studio Tales? Oh my goodness. Like, if the heavens opened up and said, okay, Courtney, we're going to gift unto you a mermaid tail of pure and complete awesome, I would... Uh, I'd be like, yeah, Marbella's studio tail, please, and thank you. I have seen them up close. I have I have been in utter and complete awe of the the like the amount of thought and love and detail that goes into these tails blows my mind. And if I ever had the opportunity to tell her, like, 
um, Raven and just be like, you have hugely inspired me over the years to just keep going and to be as mermaid as I can be with, you know, what I'm able to do and, and this kind of thing. But I love, I love, I love her looks. <laughs> okay. And we all know I'm not like silicone mermaid tail girl, but if I was, woo, let me tell you. I would do everything humanly possible to get in on that. He's staring at the camera like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, how could I do a drawing video while using paper? I don't have a special tripod pod for that. Um, what I was doing was I was actually holding it above, like, my desk. Oh, you can't really see it, can you? Um, okay, this is awkward. Hang on. Hi, guys. Join me for just a split second. Um, <laughs> whoop. So you can see above my desk, like where my printer is, I used to squish, like I didn't have the printer up here before, but I used to squish a camera here and then put a book over top. Just be careful with whatever camera, camera you're using. I was just using my phone. And I would do that and then I would draw down, like I would draw here and it would be filming down. Um, otherwise, like I have a tiny tripod that Alfie uses and then I have two big tripods just because I'm filming so much other stuff. So. Um, that's, that's kind of how I get away with it. You can also actually grab, um, one of these. I got this actually at the dollar, at the dollar store. And if you have whoop, a phone, it's actually a phone clamp and it can hold, it can hold actually quite large, uh, smartphones. <coughs> and then it has a big clamp on the other side that you can actually clamp. So that's how I've been doing my, um, no, I'm stuck. There we go. That's how I've been doing my streams on Instagram lately. So that's been quite handy. Um, that'd be so cute. Aw. Would you ever make a high waisted version for people that dislike or are unable to wear low waisted bottoms? These are high waisted bottoms. These ones come up quite high. So they like, um, they sit. I, I have actually a picture up on my web, up on the shop, if, on the main page if you scroll down. But I would say like, so these are high, pretty high waisted. Like there's my belly button. I would say that these probably sit like, like right below, like right even here. And so when I pull them up a little bit more, they can get really close to my belly button. So I feel like that's pretty, like, I am limited obviously to what my manufacturer provides. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can, I can, um, just provide what they what they provide and I can give them feedback and stuff and be like oh hey guys you know do you think you could potentially down the road maybe do this instead or offer like another option um for other people who are maybe interested in a different option and that kind of thing and those dwarfs I'm like what are you talking about super fortunate they're surrounding the girl uh, whoa really oh they are beautiful I haven't heard anything about my belly in a long time. I'm missing your stuff. I don't think, yeah, I don't know how much they, like, I don't know how much she still posts on social media and stuff. I see, like, occasionally I'll, I'll see stuff, but, um, like, not super, not super often anymore, which kind of makes me sad because I, I really miss, I really miss seeing and being inspired by the beautiful, the beautiful creations. So again, kind of like as I go, I'm still just sort of fleshing out. It's also hard to talk and draw at the same time, so I'm just kind of noodling. But if you guys want me to demonstrate anything or show, ooh, look at that, ooh, something on my screen, um, or show anything specifically, feel free to let me know as that is the theme of today's uh, video. Look at this. I'm trying to be all like cool and have an actual theme. It's just terrible, right? Um, I love Rebella's Tales. Uh, so you can't do anything so physical issues. High fives. Uh, but what camera would you recommend for underwater filming? Um, yeah, for sure. I don't have my camera in here, but I use the GoPro Hero 5. I think there's now, like, the 6 and the 7 are also out. Um, I do link to all of my equipment, and everything is actually in my Amazon affiliate um, store, and I do believe I have it. Uh, yeah, so under support my channel, um, in the description box down below, it'll say shop my mermaid themed Amazon store. And in there I have like, I have like the, the light curtains and stuff. I have all my camera gear, all the monofins that I use, um, any like earplugs, nose clips, goggles, my, my mask. I have, um, I have a lot of tools and a lot of stuff in there that, that, and the, though they are like affiliate, 
uh, links. It doesn't cost you any more to use uh, said links. The only difference is, is that I make a small uh, portion off of the sale, which is really great and helps support my channel. So it's a kind of a nifty thing. If you see something that I use that you like and you want to grab it, if you grab it from my, my affiliate store, then um, you're doing us both a solid. <laughs> Um, I love how your streams always have an elf account. It's so cute. Why doesn't every streamer do that? I just, I kind of felt like, I don't know, he makes me happy. And I feel like if he makes me so happy, maybe he'll make other people happy if they just sort of see him chilling and being a good boy. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, that's good today. So I have some like reference and stuff that I'm looking at on the other screen, like old tales that I've done. Trying to get like a feel for what I uh, what I want to do with this one, but I'm not really sure yet. Is that me? No, not stupid. <laughs> We'll see where I end up. Um, hi guys, what did I miss? Not much. We are just chilling, um, sort of trying to get a bit of a theme for today going. If you guys have questions relating to how to design mermaid tails and that kind of thing, maybe how to use, um, I wanted to call this Procreate, but it's not Procreate. It is, what is it? It's Sketchbook. There we go. Woo! Um, for how to use Sketchbook, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer them. And I will still be making a full, like, how to design a mermaid tail tutorial, and I will actually draw it to, like, from scratch. I'll do, I'll do a little something, but I just kind of felt like today I wanted to have just a little bit of a theme going. Just a little bit, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Somewhere like this. Somewhere like this. I don't really know. We're just kind of, you know, experimenting a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have sensory issues that prevent me from being able to wear anything that rests below my belly button. Um, but the sim bottoms are so pretty. And I could totally relate. I have sensory processing disorder. I'm not sure if that's what you have as well. But yeah, it's great. Certain fabrics will just send me into this oblivion of just absolute, it's just not good. So certain materials, certain fabrics I can't wear. Um, and it's not like an allergy. It's just like my brain doesn't understand like and perceive touch the same way and like texture the same way. So there's like certain foods I can't eat. There's certain just things that I can't deal with and can't, <laughs> and can't do. But hey, what are you going to do? So um, that's the other reason like I, I pride most of my stuff in being like, quite, quite good. There were some shirts that I'd had in the store. Um, bless you. Bless you. You get one more in there? One more sneeze? Is you okay? You want some chicken? You want some chicken? You want to get the chicken? He's like, I don't want to get the chicken. I just want to eat the chicken. He's like, oh, there we go. Um, and that kind of thing. It's good, good times. So I totally understand, and I, I'm sorry that they don't sit a little bit higher. They might sit a little bit higher on you, depending, like, if they're going to fit a little differently on everyone. Um, but the basic idea is that they come out just to your belly button, so. I'm sorry.
really digging that yet. I'm not really sure what I'm thinking yet. I'm just gonna give it another second here to just, you know, mellow. Just like a dot, you know? I literally forgot what I was doing in my game. Uh-oh! <laughs> Oh no, I lost my spot. No, why? Made it today. Yesterday was just too busy at work to join. Barely came up for air. Oh, gee whiz. Poor thing. That's no good. Hello, hello. Your iPad screen is not back on, by the way. Oh, shoot. Thank you. Guys. Guys. Oh my gosh. That's just terrible. Thank you for letting me know. I feel so silly. Um, I started practicing some mermaid uh, tricks. Courtney, I did the twister moves. Sweet! I got water in my nose a little the first time, but I had a nose clip on now, and I'm loving it. Excellent! Way to go! Yes, I finally made it. Oh, hello, hello! <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Hello. Sweet. You guys are awesome. I feel like uh, I'm making my tail sketch a little too detailed. When you're first starting out, it's more like just like laying down the, the foundation of what you're thinking. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, perfect, I guess, but just kind of the initial vibe, maybe. I don't know. Does that, does that make any kind of sense to anybody? I don't know. I'm just crazy pants now. do for the bottom part. Like, I really don't know what I want to do. Ah. <laughs> Maybe something... Ever just have one of those days guys where you're like you know what it was a stressful kind of a start and I'm just trying to piece my life back together here yeah something like this something like this okay we're we're slowly getting there But that's the thing. Sometimes it takes, like, it'll take more than, uh, more than just one attempt. Sometimes it'll take a couple of noodles and a couple of doodles to actually feel like you're going to get somewhere that you want to go or you want to be. So getting, like, super stuck on what you're doing and being like, oh my gosh, this isn't exactly what I wanted. Like, <laughs> like you never really know where you're going to end up. Like, this is not what I was picturing when I was first, um, noodling, but sometimes that's, that's okay. Like, you know, happy accidents, right guys? I'm not sure what I want to do for the top yet, either. Um, he wasn't paying attention to your iPad. I was drawing, too. <laughs> I enjoy listening to you when I'm drawing more stuff. Oh yeah. Hey, Courtney, when I swim, um, I do it as if I'm uh, breathing and scared I might breathe water in. Give me tips. Um, if you're worried about, like... What can I suggest? Like, um... A nose clip would be a good place to start, or you can swim with like a, a full like mask. Like I have a dive um free diving mask. Um you can always just let a little bit of air out as you're swimming to avoid sucking in air. But like in reality, I think your body will probably be like, no, don't breathe in. It's like a reflex. 
like breathing in water is not a thing. I don't think you would want to try. <laughs> I don't think you would want to try that. You know. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else to uh, suggest. Hello to Zelda. Oh, is Lolly in the? Oh, Lolly's in the house. Hello, hello, fishy. <laughs> How do you get the shape? No matter how many times I draw, it looks weird. Um, so for me, I have just like muscle memory for a lot of things. What you can do to, to start. So if you're somebody and you're like, oh, shapes really are hard for me. Just get a piece of paper and just, and just, just noodle, just go and make some shapes. Okay. Just, and then like repetitive shapes, you know, working down the same line and trying to go over the same line a couple of times. So that's just like, that is just something, the more that you draw, the easier this is going to get. And the more like muscle memory that you'll have. When I was in school, right, we had life drawing classes. We had uh, life drawing classes every day. And then, so that we were at school five days. So we had, I think a Monday and then Tuesday was the club. And then Wednesday we had anatomy and then Thursday was another club. And then Friday, there was something on Friday. What was there on Friday? There was another drawing class on the Friday. I can't even remember. This is so long ago. Like, it's 10 plus years ago. I don't even remember now. Um, so, but that's the thing. Like, the more we were all just drawing so much every day that you just kind of, like, you just get, you know, used to drawing things a certain, a certain way and having, like, um, a shorthand for certain things. So... Like for me, if I draw a leg, go ahead and laugh. <laughs> um, but I have like my own kind of shortcut for it now. Like I know where where things would be um, more or less and how, how bones and stuff go. So having a knowledge of what you're drawing as well is going to help. Um, the, the more that you are aware of, of the anatomy and things that, how it's going to look, you'll be able to, it's like you need to know the rules before you can break them kind of a thing. So the more that you do it, the, the, the better off you kind of get. Like you can even see the, the evolution um, gallery, the current sketch. You can see the evolution um, of how I've been drawing tails if I can get all the way back to the beginning. All the way back to the beginning. So that was the very first one I did in this program where I was like, oh, I'm just going to experiment. So you can see like... <laughs> I'm learning things. My line's not very confident. I'm not really sure where I'm going. I'm thinking too much about it. And I was getting too caught up in the the little details first. Like here's another one. Like obviously I'd finished painting this one. But like my sketch for this one wasn't as loose and as rough. I was trying to be something that I just, it just wasn't kind of connecting. And then you can kind of see as I go, the line gets a little bit more solid and a little bit more confident and a little bit more together. And just with each one that I've done, I've gotten a little bit further, um, further along. Some are better than others. There's a little bit of fan art that I don't know that I'm going to finish. I'd like to finish it one day. It would be good. Um, but as you go, you just kind of, you just like exploring and, and, and the confidence and the line and stuff will all kind of come together. Eventually it just takes, it just takes time. You know, I know that's like, not the answer that everybody wants. They're always like, I want to know how to do this right now. And it's like, oh, I can't tell you how to do it right now because I don't know. Wah! You know. Um, <laughs> awesome tale so far. Thank you. Uh, I found the wax earplugs in my local bargain shop. Nice. Seven pairs for uh for one ninety nine. Cheap as chips. Excellent. Hi from Florida. Hello, hello. Oh, Ella Kuhn just subscribed. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> uh, I remember learning how to draw horses using circles. Yes. And everything can kind of be like, I don't know if you saw, so if you were just joining us now, if you go back, my first noodle actually had some anatomy in it. So it actually had like, I was trying to think like, okay, so if this would have been the... I, sometimes I think of it in terms of like clothing, like this would have been like the underwear kind of area, right? And and then I had my idea for where the legs were going to come out was going to be somewhere in here. And then I had drawn a little, a little line to give myself an idea there. And then that's the calves, right? And then the feet would actually be like in here. Now, of course, this is not a, a great like 
you know, actual free divers, like, you want to have your feet more, like, straight, you want to have some space, like, in the ankles, but that's, like, a whole other topic of conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just taking some time and, like, not getting really down on yourself, uh, I was, who was I talking to you about this? Like, I actually, I brought this up in the other video that I did a while back, the, the, um, what was it called, you guys? Artist something. The artist struggle. And, uh, excuse me. and how we can get so hung up on, like, where we're at in comparison to everybody else. And it's like, you know what? Like, okay, I am not the best artist, okay? If I thought like that, you know how, like, limiting and narrowing and, and, and stupid that would be, it'd be like, oh, I have nothing left to learn from anybody. I'm like 32 years old. I have a lot left to learn from a lot of everybody's out there. Okay. Like really like grammar and, and, and the English language might be a good place to start. Hey, everybody's, but you know what I'm saying? Like you have to think, you have to go at it with that mindset, but then you also have to go at it with the mindset that, you know what? It's taken me X number of years to get to where I am now, and I can be proud of that, and I can be okay with that. I need to be open to learning new things, but it is okay to be okay with where you're at. Believe it or not, it just makes me nuts. Like, it makes me so nuts, because if I got hung up on all of the other artists out there who are doing things so much better than I am, or so much more amazing than I am, like, I would just, I would just not get up in the morning. I'd be like, forget it. I accept defeat we're done. There's no point, like whatever, you know, but that's not what life's all about. Like I bring something different to the table than person B and person B brings something to the table that's different than person C and et cetera, et cetera. Daniel O'Neill just subscribed. Welcome to the pod, Daniel. Thank you for subscribing. So, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's all about like, accepting where you're at because that's all that you have all that you have is right now and if you are only ever going to be like oh my god that life. like it's just not you know what I mean you have to it's all part of the adventure it's all part of the journey you know and I don't know it can be really hard like especially when I was in the animation industry I'd be working with some of the top artists and some of the most like single most talented people that you like you're ever going to meet you know like I've worked with people who've worked for Disney okay who have worked on major projects and it's just it's so intimidating and it's so mind blasting to be like wow <laughs> you know what I'm saying but instead of it being like oh my god I'm never going to be as good as this person I don't want to like beat this thought to death here but I just want to say like if I'm never going to be as good as this person then what's the what's the point instead of being like I only know what I know what does this person know? What can I learn from this person? Anyways, we're gonna, that's just like my thinking on the whole thing. <laughs> Don't you love what happens when you guys get me on a tangent? Don't you love it? It's just the best, like most ridiculous thing just ever. <laughs> Mama mermaid lesson time. Yes, sometimes you've got to say the thing that needs to be said because not everybody feels that way. And so many people, myself included, have been so depressed and so bummed that we're just not as good as everybody else. And reality, it doesn't freaking matter. <laughs> you know what? Like, if you want something bad enough, you're going to figure it out. You're going to find a way. It's going to come together. It just is. You just have to, like... Um, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still learn from anyone at any age, just gets harder to want to listen. <laughs> well, I think the thing from that is, right, like, just because, like, okay, so listen to everybody's stuff, but then also apply what you know and what you've learned in your life to that, because it's not necessarily that everything everybody else knows is right. Like, I have been told some outrageous stuff by people. I, I'm not going to repeat any of it because I don't, like, Everybody's going to know exactly what I'm talking about. But I have been told some outrageous stuff by, by talented people who should know better. And because I've learned it from someone else and I see that it applies, when I'm told these things, I can be like, okay, I totally see where you're coming from. Okay, 
here are my thoughts on it. Like my mom and I do this all the time. Like we'll be um, studying, you know, our nutrition course and there's going to be a question and there's um, obviously like we have to come up with the answer for it. And I'll be like, well, this is why I think it's this. And she's going to be like, well, this is why I think it's that. And we both listen to each other and we both break it down. And it'll be like, well, mom, like these are my reasons for feeling this way. This is where I'm getting my information and she'll do the same. And because we can both be open-minded enough to be like, you know, most of the time, sometimes we're not, and sometimes this ends in a huge fight, but it's, <laughs> let's just be real here for a second. But because we can both have that, like, open enough mindset, I can look and see, okay, this is where she's coming from. Do I agree with this based off of what I know? And does she agree what I'm saying, like, with what I'm saying based off of what I know and what she knows? And then coming to the solution that way, I don't know how convoluted that just got, but, like, do you kind of see what I'm saying here? I just, sometimes I feel like, yeah, it's important to to take what you know and then, and what other people know and then kind of find like the happy medium. Sometimes with art, it's really hard though. It can be, because art can be so subjective, that like can be, it just is so subjective. And when somebody comes to you and they're like, look, I want this to be this color or I want this to look this way or I want this to be like this, and then they don't give you their reasoning behind it when it's just this subjective, like, they feel like it and they don't come at you and they're not like, well, this is why I see it needing to be like this. It's, it's like, okay, well, what the, you know, what the haystack? Like, you just want me to make this decision. You haven't given me any value behind that decision and I'm supposed to just take, what, take this and run what I can see based off of what I know that this is not a good, this is not a good move. This is how, like, okay, no offense, if any of you guys really liked the Star Wars episodes 1, 2, and 3, like, I loved episode 1, but 2 and 3, so if you like them, I totally no offense meant, but that's how movies like that get made, okay? That's how you go from, like, Star Wars to, like, Star Wars, okay? That's how that happens. It happens when somebody thinks that they know all the things, and then that somebody's not questioned. And when you're not questioned, like, how do you grow from that? Like, I don't even, I just, I don't even, did you sneeze again? Did you really? You're so cute right now. It's killing me. Oh, Alfie. It's just too cute. Anyways, um, yeah, I totally don't mean to offend anybody if you like the, like the Star Wars um, 1, 2, and, and 3. Oh, dog. Alfie. Thank you. Oh, go in your buddy. Yes, what a good boy. Oh, he's so good. Okay, focus, Courtney. Your your live stream. Focus. Oh man, there's no end level of art. Uh was more what I was trying to describe, I guess. Yes. Uh find things wrong with their art. Okay, I, I feel like I've missed, like, so many comments and stuff, so I'll be right back. I have to bring my dog to go potty. Uh-oh. Oh, man. When you made a reference to comment, I was referring to people see others work and think, oh, my art isn't uh, that good right now. I'm no good. Uh, but off people we look up to still. Uh, can you... Okay, hang on. Turn into a sheet. I'm having trouble... Um, okay, so, uh, realistic scales. Okay, let's just, we're gonna just dive right back into the whole point of the whole universe here. So, realistic scales. So, um, in here, like, to make a sheet, I've not actually tried it in here, so we can just kind of give it a go, I guess. Um, so, with my, uh, mirroring on, just to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna just kind of look at my pants and, uh, <laughs> make a decision. Now, I actually realized I already made a mistake. So having your um, edges rounded is going to be important. So for how this is all going to kind of come together, I have no idea what this is going to turn out like. 
but it's really good if you make it almost like you're designing like a full-on sequin, right? Like you're designing a full-on kind of piece. Um, now I'm going to do just the drawing and then you got, I will show you how to make a sheet out of it. And uh, hey, you can actually use it on the scale that I'm working on. So let's get some fish like a fish scale of reference, shall we? So, okay, so I'm looking here, I'm going to keep my shape because I kind of like the shape, but what I would do first is break it down with uh, just, without like all the extra details, just, are you, got my screen, good, uh, <laughs> making sure, um, and I'm going to just kind of like adding my details. There's like lots of little details. Then I'm gonna get a new layer, gonna put that over top, kind of figuring out what. It's almost starting to look a bit like a seashell. <sighs> So again, like I'm not, um, I haven't got enough time today to do a full on thing. So I'm just going to kind of work in some detail and not a huge amount. I also have not ever tried to do this on my uh, tablet before. So it's kind of crazy on my iPad. I mean, I usually do this kind of stuff on my Cintiq, which has a different, uh, Sort of vibe all together with like the pressure sensitivity and then using Photoshop versus using uh, Sketchbook, but I actually quite like Sketchbook. I feel like Sketchbook is pretty good. I'm gonna leave that up there for reference. Now I'm just gonna fill in the background. Um, so when you do this, if you're going to do this for, um, and I will eventually make the ebook that explains all of this, it'll happen, guys, I swear. Do your scales all grayscale if you're going to use Photoshop. Well, actually, any program that has uh, layer styling and, and this kind of thing. Do it all in grays and blacks and whites and this kind of thing. Because the reason, well, the reason I say that is because then you can set it to uh, like overlay or you can set it to multiply, you can set it to whatever, and you can actually get some really sweet different designs without having to change the individual scale color every single time, which let's be honest, who, who has the time for that? Like, no, <laughs> just like the biggest note that ever noped, okay, my dudes? So when I do this, I would do this, uh, and I'll show you actually, I can probably show you why actually right in this program, because this program actually does offer uh, different blending modes and different options like that. I think I've been calling them layer styles. I think I meant blending modes, but I'm not sure what I said. So here we are. <laughs> Welcome to functioning as an adult with Courtney, <laughs> Be your host today. <laughs> Guys, sometimes I wonder, like, how I actually made it this far in life. Sometimes I really, really do actually wonder that. Yeah. Don't you ever? Yeah, just throwing in a little extra details. I know it seems like, oh my gosh, she's spending like a lot of time on this one scale, but this one scale is going to get... Now, something fun that you could do, which I haven't actually done um, in any of my recent tales. I used to actually do this on my painted tails all the time. I would make two stencils, and then what I would do is I would have one that was like damaged, and then I would have one that was like nice, and then I would just alternate so that the tail actually looked like maybe some areas were a little bit more like beaten up, or a little bit this, or a little bit that, or whatever. So... Yeah, that's kind of a fun thing to do, so just putting that out there. Okay, is that doing anything? 
Did that do anything? I didn't do anything. Did oh, <laughs> no, I did my lines on the wrong layer. Oh, fine. Be like that. Fine. It's fine. Oh, why? Okay, well, I'm going to have to get a little creative here because I didn't realize I actually did all that on the same layer. That's my own bad. That's my own bad. It's fine. Sometimes you just have to get creative, guys. Like, like what are you going to do? Sometimes things just happen. Okay, what else do I want to have? I want to have some shadow, so let's get some shadow. Let's do that. A little bit darker. So, okay, good enough. Good enough to illustrate my point. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to merge him down, and I'm going to turn this on to beat this layer. I'm actually going to run to the washroom quick. Um, because I got to go. So you guys are just going to hang out with the dog for a sec, okay? And then I will be right freaking back. Alfie Cam. Alfie Cam! I'll be right back, guys. You stay put. You have to entertain them. What a good boy. Did you entertain everybody? Did you did you entertain everybody? It's like, oh yes, my I did a good job, guys. Okay, so now we're here. Um, okay, what are we what are we doing here? I'm happy the laptop can fix mistakes like a phone. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. I think I've missed a bunch of uh, comments here. I like how the same people always come to these streams like a community. Yeah, what a lovely community it is. It totally is the best. Alfie's winking at us. That's so cute. Alfie, the world's most ferocious guard doggo, does a heckin' good job. Yes, he does. Very safe and building a community too, which is really lovely. Yes, I think so. Is it similar on Patreon? Have you guys pledged money? <laughs> Yes, this is very similar to my uh, Patreon pod uh, over on patreonpod.com. We are a great, the corny Merkels. Oh, geez, I hope not. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're a great little community on there as well um, with the private chat. It's very similar to having just the chat, but ongoing and you can access through Discord at any time. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I, I love the, the, that's probably the best part of this whole thing is like the, the community building aspect of all of it. I just, it makes me so happy. I feel so lucky. We're good. Okay. So let's make some little um, scales here. So of course now, is this rotating? It is rotating. I don't want you to rotate. Can you not rotate? Okay. Good. Done. I probably should have duplicated, duplicated this layer before I started going crazy. <laughs> so this isn't going to be perfect obviously because this is not in the photoshop so i don't have a shift button to move stuff around super accurately um, but it's basically just going and then merging and then going and then merging so i'll go duplicate duplicate layer i'll go up into my move tool my transform tool i mean and then i'll go and i'll move it over and i try and keep the spacing even between them and then i'll merge this one and i'm going to shrink these down because obviously they're quite large, so I'll make them a bit smaller. Like so, and I feel like they're on an angle. I can totally feel that they're on an angle. That's so weird. It doesn't want to let me do it. Like, like, no. 
can see. There we go. Okay, and then uh, duplicates, and then move. So this is a little bit faster to do in Photoshop. I'm going to be totally honest with you, um, but this is the tool that I'm using right now. So then we're going to duplicate this one more time, and now we're going to oh we're going to make a mistake. We're going to go here. And then we're going to go over top. And now you'll start to see how this turns into scales. Duplicate. The reason I merge and duplicate each time is because it actually saves you work in the long, in the long haul. Well, it's actually not a bad scale pattern. I'm totally hating this. Ah! <laughs> Centered. Okay, so I don't know how many more of these I have in me here. Let's duplicate that. Oops, let's go in here. This. Okay, I think that's enough to illustrate my point. I'm on point. Okay, now my bigger point is going to be let's uh, say that I want the tail. <laughs> There's a color for you. Let's let's make it like. There you go. Let's make it purple. Make it pink. Okay, so. Now, under blending modes, it's going to be the same thing in uh, Photoshop. It's the blending option. And you're going to be given a bunch of different blending modes. So overlay, soft light, hard light, uh, color dodge, the whole thing. So we can just experiment. Um, and, but you can see, so setting it to overlay, now I've got, um, I've got scales that actually still apply, that the light is still brighter, and the gray is a little darker, and then the, the, the highlight and everything is still there. So that is kind of... The, the basics that are just behind it, but you can experiment with different with different ones. Soft light gives you a little bit more of like a truer thing. And what I will end up doing in some cases is I'll actually, uh, if I like the blending mode, but it's just not vibrant, like it's just not um, enough contrast, I'll actually just duplicate it um, and do it that way if I want to specifically use soft light because then I actually have the ability to um, change the opacity or opacity or how you want to say it. So there's that one, you know, hard light gives it that harder edge. I usually use somewhere between overlay, soft light, and hard light. Um, I don't really mess around with color dodge because as you can see, that changes it too, too much, like the base color. And because um, you need to work in Pantone colors when you're doing this, keeping part of the, of the tail, like the scale white or like a neutral color so that the original color shows through means you're more likely to avoid colors becoming other weird colors when you go to get them printed because there are some instances where like a nice turquoise doesn't actually exist as a Pantone color and will come back as like baby blue and you're like ha 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 thanks for that universe you're like yeah so there's like but there's a bunch of different options that you can experiment depending on what um, kind of an effect you're going for you can get a lot of different see these ones obviously don't luminosity right um, multiply, darken, color burn. You know, like it's just all kinds of different ones. But like I said, I stick somewhere between overlay, soft light, and then hard light to give you that kind of a, that kind of a vibe. So I hope that kind of cleared that up just like a dot. Um, if you guys want a fuller mermaid scale making tutorial, let me know. I am planning on actually releasing a scale template as well as uh, another ebook specifically on mermaid scale sheets and this kind of thing. I have a lot of these things planned. I just actually having the time to do them is kind of becoming the issue here. <laughs> yep. Okay, so where did we leave off of this monstrosity? This monstrosity. I individually, um, I didn't know you could do that. Last time I used sketchbook, I individually copied 291 scales. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Nice. That's intense. Oh man, it's so good. Um, I know the feeling my town is horrible. Oh, I hope one day to meet everyone from the Mer community. Yes. I I love I love our community. I really do. So It's the best part of what I do, honestly. Hanging out with you guys on a live stream is the best part of my job. Seriously. I love it so much. Hanging with you guys 
and talking mermaids and answering questions and all this stuff just like it just warms me in such a way that like no other kind of community ever really has. So thank you guys for that. Just on an aside here, <laughs> the side note. That helps. I would love a tutorial as well. Sweet. I shall actually, let's just pull up my Trello right now and just add that to the list because that's what I kind of feel like. Maybe that's a thing. Trello, go to YouTube. And I want to add this to my list. Um, scale design tutorial. Add part. That's usually what I do. So when you guys give me like ideas for videos, I just I have this huge list of video ideas that I kind of just pick from randomly. Like what's gonna fit with this week's kind of thing, you know? Um codes in my game is killing me all. Sending love. I hope it gets better. <laughs> I live next to a college. Pajamas are everywhere. <laughs> um, I wish there was another murder near me that I could go swimming with. Oh, jeez. You guys. We need, like, a field trip. Like, a group, like, hangout. You know what I'm saying? It'd be really good. Oh, I'm not using the right layer. Am I using the right brush? Oh no, my world's colliding in with itself here. Okay, come on. Oh, and of course, my winning thing isn't on. That's super useful. That's not nice. What's going on here? Cool. Well, I don't really know what to think of this, but I don't, like, hate it. I just... Meh. Yeah. I just feel like I want to stick with one more of these, like, right in there somewhere. That's not bad. Okay, cool beans. Let's move this guy up on the page, because, hello. It's way too far down now. Better. That's better. Sweet. Cool. Any other questions? Ask me all the questions. Um, I'm so glad uh, this stream is happening today. They are so relaxing, uh, which is needed because someone threatened my school. Oh my gosh. Oh no, that's no good. Hope you guys are all okay. That's really scary. I've experienced something like that where we had, there was like a bomb threat in the building and you're like, okay, I guess we're all just gonna leave now. <laughs> you're like, what do you do? It's just, it's scary. And you know, I had the dog with me and it's like, oh my gosh, yikes. Vaporeon, yeah. Marie, oh, are we talking, wait, wait, are we talking about Pokemon? Why are we talking about Pokemon? What's going on? What's going on? Okay, you can have one Gen 1 Pokemon as a pet in real life. Oh, shoot. That's like a really tough question, guys, because I am hardcore, like, Team Charizard all the way. And I don't know, because I love Vaporeon. And uh, my mom loves Squirtle. Blastoise, to be specific. And um, I don't know, what Gen 1, you know what Gen 1 Pokemon I would have? I'd have Pidgey. I love Pidgey so much. <laughs> Guys don't even understand. I love Pidgey like. Anyways. But yeah, that might be where I <laughs> that might be where I rest. <laughs> uh, how old is Alfie? Alfie's gonna be nine in December. It's 3 a.m. and I don't want to sleep. Oh no, but you need to sleep. I might need to change my stream schedule just for you, huh? So you can <laughs> I always feel so bad. You're like, it's 2.30 in the morning, Courtney. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, trying the new battery, crossing my fingers, it fixes my computer problems. I haven't been able to design or make any digital art in five days. No. <sighs> I think Marie is Gen 2, isn't it? Marie? I think. You look it up. Gen 2? 
Gen 2. Yes, Marie. Electric type Pokemon introduced in Generation 2. It evolves into Falafi starting at level 50, which evolves into Ampharos starting level 30. Guys, I love Pokemon way too much. I have been playing Pokemon Go a lot. Super, super good. I don't know, how many people can you add as friends? Otherwise, I would just give you guys my code. And then we could all be like BFFs on Pokemon Go. <laughs> Turn your volume down, girl. Come on. Don't trespass while playing Pokemon Go. But yeah, it's good. So I'll end up taking Alfie out for like a Pokemon walk later. We do this. I dress him up as Pikachu sometimes. And then sometimes I'll wear my Pikachu onesie. And then like the two of us are just like the biggest Pokemon nerds ever. Okay, none of you want to be my friends anymore, right? <laughs> One oh five PM here. Excellent. It is noon. It is twelve oh six right now by me. I think Marie's adorable. Honestly, I feel like little sheep Pokemon. Yes, please. All the things. Super, super cute. But yes, if you guys have any other questions for me as I just continue to noodle away, feel free to ask. Mermaid tail uh, making, designing, that kind of thing. Obviously, I'll be able to answer some color-related questions when I get on to the color portion of today's episode. <laughs> I feel like these are just starting to become like a standard where I, I take too long, take too long. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? This is life. Drawing and talking at the same time is pretty hard, honestly. Like, I don't know if any of you have ever tried it, but it's actually not as easy as you think. So I, I want to make sure that, like, I'm giving you guys the good infos as well as uh, doing this. It was... Oh, come on. Thank you. There we go. Um, Butterfree! Yeah! That tail is so good. Thank you! Uh, Rape was part of my first team of Pokemon when I played Heart Gold. Oh, it's the first. So Rape holds a very special place in my heart. That's so cute. Oh, I love it. I love it. I think the very first Pokemon I ever caught was a Pidgey. And, uh, followed quickly by Rattata. And, uh, I don't know. I've always had a love for Pidgey. I've always had a Pidgey... Not necessarily on, like, my main team, but just I've always had Pidgey around. And, um, like, if I'm able to have one. Um, I really like Swanna as my, like, flying type if I don't have, like, Charizard covering that base. But I usually have a Charizard on my team, but, like, my last team had, uh... Oh, no, I can't even remember who was on that. Like, it's so long ago that I haven't really been playing a lot of the the, like, handheld games. I'm really excited for the next, um, generation that's going to be on the Switch. Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm pumped to see where that's going to take us. I'm not sure how I feel about the starters, but, um, I've always kind of felt like that usually when I first see the new starters and I'm like, Meh. like, I don't know. Is it okay? Maybe it's okay. It'll be fine. So we'll see.
Uh, Courtney Murray, it is hard to balance your attention between the art and the conversation. When you're the artist, yes, it can be. It can be kind of interesting, but I have fun doing these regardless, and I really wasn't sure, like, I had uh, an interesting start to my day, and so I was like, oh, no, like, am I going to be able to actually perform? Like, am I actually going to be able to draw anything? Am I going to, you know, really make a mess of this? Or, like, I don't know. Sometimes you got to be in the zone, and sometimes stuff will get you out of the zone, and... It's out of your control, and it's okay, but what are you going to do? Pidgey was my first, I think, Mary was just one of the early ones. It's so cute. <laughs> I like the fire Pokemon the most. But that's just my preference. Yes. I'm confused. I don't know anything about Pokemon. <laughs> I don't like to. Uh, I gotta go. I have you just finished. 12 hour shift at work. Oh, Mega Hungry! Get on it for sure. We'll see you later. Uh, I wish I could get a tail from you. Aw, thank you. <laughs> How do you get through Artist Block? That's a good one. How do you get through Artist Block? I think, first of all, realizing that Artist Block happens quite literally to everybody, um, and uh, it can kind of sneak up on you, and it can kind of suck, and it kind of depends. I feel like there's a couple of different kinds of artist block. I think the most important thing is that, like, if you feel like you need to take a break, don't judge yourself for that, and don't be all like, oh my god, like, why do I need to take a break? Like, it's so, you know, whatever. Just take a break. Take a break, maybe read, maybe do some, some other kind of crafty, artsy activity. Um, and if that's not really your jam and you're kind of like me and you're just like, you have to kind of push through it, maybe it's your day job, maybe it's something that you just have to get done, like you're getting paid for it, you just have to do it, but you don't really, you're not really feeling the vibe. Um, just like I had shown you guys earlier, sometimes just doing simple exercises, like simple shapes, just simple like noodling taking uh, a shape and then maybe turning it into a character if you see something in there. Like, a game that Eric and I actually like to play all the time is um, where we take, like, whatever, uh, like, rando, you know, shape and then turn it into something. So, like, if it was, like, a person, it'd be like, okay, so, you know. And don't really, like, think too too hard about it. Just kind of, like... you know, just do kind of whatever kind of comes to your, to your mind, right? And then it, it'll start to get some juices, <laughs> juices, and I don't know what the heck that is, but <laughs> juices flowing again. Um, it's just so important, though, not to be too hard on yourself. And I know that as artists, we, like, we're already judged and we're already critiqued beyond anything that we even ever ask for. Everyone's got to have their little stupid opinion. Everyone's got to have their insight. Everyone's got to have, like, their two cents worth, right? And sometimes you just want to just draw for yourself, and it's not it's not about um, listening to other people's crap. Like, I don't know. Sometimes it's important to, to listen to other people's crap, and other times it's just like, what do you want to do? What do you actually want to draw? What, what matters to you? But the important thing is to, if you're tired, take a break, don't quit, is um, who said that to me? There was... Um, I can't remember who said that to me now. Somebody had said that to me. That's like, it's something that I used to do a lot when I was first starting my channel. I would get excruciatingly overwhelmed and frustrated and upset. I wasn't getting the growth that I wanted on my channel. I couldn't afford to quit my job. I was like, just somebody please give me a sign from above telling me I'm doing the right stupid thing here. And I would say to Eric all the time, you know what? I just want to quit. I just want to quit. I just want to quit. And I remember reading it somewhere, it was somebody who had posted something, you know, one of those wise, like, very insightful people in your, in your Facebook group that just like, hey, I have the solution for you. And it was like, take a break. Don't quit, but just take a break. There's a difference. So now, like the stupid shorts, like, okay, I was like the bathing suit bottoms, right? I was so excited to get those going and I was just so unbelievably overwhelmed with the amount of work that's involved in actually designing these and then like making the graphics for them and then posting them and then advertising I was just too overwhelmed 
So instead of just giving up on the entire mermaid business, because that's what I wanted to do, I took a break. I was like, you know what? We're going to go for a nice long walk with the dog. We're going to play some Pokemon Go. We're just going to relax. And then we're going to get back to it. The other thing that I find super helpful is to set a timer. If you're struggling to even sit down because you just don't feel the vibe, set a timer for like like five or 10 minutes and say, look, I'm just going to draw and I'm going to do some practice. I'm going to look at some reference from life. I'm going to do just a little design, whatever. And I only have to do it for 10 minutes. And at the end of that 10 minutes, you're either going to be like, okay, time for another break. Or actually I could keep going with this. And then you keep going. But as long as you like, don't quit on yourself. Don't, don't like, don't give up. Big minute, one swim here, Phoenix. <gasps> Tiger! Oh! Loving it! Um, yeah, so hopefully that, I don't know. I get art block a lot when I was in art class last semester and we'd be sent home with art homework. Knowing my professor wanted some um, spectacular piece, I think I just forced myself to do it. Art block, um, so what is art block? Art block is kind of like when you sit down, it's a couple of different things. It's when you sit down and you are so burnt out because all you do is create for everybody else and you don't create for yourself and you don't know what to draw because everything you draw is dependent on your future and, or your future depends on everything that you draw is what I meant to say. And everything you do needs to be a portfolio piece, which is BS. Oh my gosh. But it's all you can think about. And so everything that you do is just fraught with this possibility of failure. And you can't perform anymore. Now you just can't draw. So there's that for art block. Art block is also something as simple as just not knowing what to draw and not feeling like you have the means to do it. So you're sitting down, you're like, you want to draw something, but you don't know what it is. You don't feel like maybe your skills are there. You just aren't feeling the vibe. Um... You know, art block is also having too many projects on the go and wanting to dedicate a certain amount of time to each and not being able to and then not being able to pick what the most important thing is. What is the essential thing that you need to get done? I also kind of consider that art block because I've been there, there currently, <laughs> and uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting kind of poopy kind of place to be, to be in. But art block in general sucks. And it's a really real thing. So is burnout. And um, I don't think enough artists actually take it seriously, regardless of whether you're just doing this as a hobby or whether you're doing this as a profession or what. I feel like there's so many people who don't take it seriously when it is a serious thing. Honestly, I didn't pick up a pencil for like six months, seven months. I'm almost a year out of my full-time artist job where I was a, a character designer for television animation. And I couldn't even, I was so grossed out by everything I was doing. Like I forced myself through a couple of pieces and because I felt like I really had to, but it wasn't from that place of really wanting to create and wanting to draw. The only stuff that has ever kept me from feeling as miserable as I probably could have felt otherwise has been mermaid tail design and making mermaid tails for other people. That's the only thing that's really actually kept me sane <laughs> through all of this. But it wasn't until a little while ago I actually went and I bought myself a new sketchbook and I started creating for myself again and it felt really good. It feels so good not to be underneath somebody else's opinion. And like I've said before, other people's opinions are important to a degree. I wouldn't be the artist I am now if it wasn't for other people's opinions, um, you know, and, and other people's feedback and other people's wisdom and their thoughts and, and, and all of that. But I also feel like I was put through the ringer multiple times over being made to feel like I was insignificant, that I wasn't good enough, that I didn't have what it took to, to fit in with this crowd of people. And, you know, not all my jobs were like that. There were a few that were like that. And that can just feed artist block until all you want to do is just go back to working for the bank. Okay. Oh my gosh. Poor, poor <laughs> Um, oh well. Uh, I design costumes just for fun and sometimes get art block. Yes. I feel sad. <laughs> oh geez. Uh, big moment when you have the great idea on what you want to draw, but getting the ideas on the paper is a nightmare. Can we just uh, magically poof it onto paper? Yes. There is this amazing drawing done. Done. 
I know that's another part of it too, where you have in your mind what you would like to put on paper, but your skills don't necessarily reflect what you're, you know, able to put on paper. And I am there all the time. I live there. That is my home. My home is this place where my skills aren't necessarily what I need to achieve what I want to do. And that's why, like, the siren tail was such a big deal for me, because that was hard. That was really, that was a test of everything that I'm actually capable of for me. I am a cartoon drawing girl. I don't draw realistic stuff. That's just not my vibe. I used to be a little more into it, um, portraits and things like this, and um, portraits of hands and, and whatever. But it's just not my jam. And, uh, and it was a real, like, mega struggle for me. But it's important to talk about it and it's important to get it out there so that, you know, other people out there know that it's a real thing and it's okay to feel not good about your work. It's okay, but it's also okay to know that you're still learning and you're still growing and you're still, the progress is still going to be there. It might not be the most obvious progress, but it's still there, you know? So, I don't know. I didn't want to get like too heavy with all that, but I think I did a little bit, but what are you going to do? Everybody feels like it at one, one stage or another in their life, and it's not always pleasant, and it's not always easy to get through, but you will get through it. We all do, and, you know, and one day you'll be able to sit down and tell somebody else, like, hey, it's going to be okay. You know how I know it's going to be okay? Because it was okay for me. And if it's going to be, if it was okay for me, it's going to be okay for you. <laughs> Oops. How are we doing with lag? I think we're doing okay today. Oh, yeah. The feeling can never get things to look. Yeah, I know that. that getting things to look like how you want. Like, I didn't have a vision for this, so I'm not really feeling too attached to anything that I'm doing. I'm just kind of rolling with it and like, all right, well, this looks sort of like what it's looking like and it's not really the end of the world either way. <laughs> One thing to help uh, see results in your art is doing comparison art. It's great to see improvements. Oh, absolutely. Also, yeah, absolutely. That, um, I did that actually recently. I redid uh, a design of a lion that I had drawn back in 1990 or 2001, 2002. Somewhere like that. Anyways, I had redone the drawing and I was able to compare and be like, look, you know what, this is some obvious progress, obviously, because I was a teenager when I, when I drew it, and I'm you know, not a teenager anymore, um, but the thing is, is, like, even some of those, like I showed you guys earlier, the mermaid tails that I designed, you know, months ago versus the mermaid tails that I'm designing now, everything changes. If, when you guys see the difference between Faith's current, uh, her tail, Mako, and the tail that I'm making her, I mean, yes, they're going to look different, but they're also going to look different, you know what I mean? They're not going to be the same thing, because I've learned so much more um, over the, the years that I've been doing this now. So, you know, it's just like the more that you do it, the easier it's going to get. The more you're going to get a rhythm for it, the more you're going to get a flow for it. Boy, I'm having a hard time keeping my line quality under control today. <laughs> Not sure what's going on, but there you go. There's a little bird in the tree outside. It's so cute. You hear it whistling.
I just tagged you on Instagram with two posts on my first scale sheet design. I think it turned out great. Thanks so much for the tips. They really helped. You are very welcome. Let's take a look. Oh, let's take a boo, shall we? Now, did you do me or did you do Shop Vancouver Mermaid? I think you did me, but we'll see. We shall see. Ooh, look at this. Take a look. Uh, maybe is it on shopping through the mermaid? Oh, I don't see. Oh, did you now? Did you tag me or did you at me? I want to see. I don't see it yet. Oops. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, I will keep an eye out for it. I shall keep an eye out for it. Uh, I was worried I would uh, be able to watch it. Yay! <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Um, it's really hard to draw with a phone. I'm stuck. Oh no! Yeah, it is when it's such a small screen, it's definitely a challenge. <laughs> Definitely a challenge. I'm always very impressed by anybody who can do that on such a small, small, such a small screen. Even though phones are like getting ridiculously huge nowadays, it's still like super, super challenging. Can you guys hear that little bird? It sounds so cute and little. Okay. This room is small, yes. Am I allowed to try and draw you and put it on my Instagram? Oh, for sure. I love seeing when you guys do a little bit of fan art. There have been a couple of you who've done some really cute pieces. I think it's almost time to color this puppy. Now, I kind of feel like I want to try and use this in there somewhere. I feel like I worked so hard on it. I worked so hard on it, I kind of want to use it somewhere.
accidentally drawing up it because I keep ex expecting it to act a tiny bit differently than it is, but it's okay. Hmm, here's a mistake. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, hopefully if I can just hide it, nobody will notice. Okay, that's fine. Is that going to be behind there? It's going to be behind there, so that's okay. Alfie's right in, you guys. That's really cute. It's not kind of, oh, my phone. Sweet. one at a time? Is that a thing? No! Stop! Stop! Thank you. Oh. Why don't I turn that on and do half the amount of work that I actually have to do? Is that a good idea to anybody else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to design, wanted to do advertising and illustration for a career, but college um, is pricey here, so saving up, yes. You can still practice and still start, like, researching and building up your portfolio in the meantime. I kind of hate the fact that this is just the opacity on this is just garbage. Um, can I change that? Uh, no, that's better. Who wants to press that freaking hard with their pen? Like, not me, thanks. That would ruin my poor little iPad. His tail is turning more cooler. <laughs> Thanks.
Uh, what's the theme? This place is dead. It's not dead. Relax. It's all good. Um, the theme isn't anything today. Uh, I just wanted to do a little something. Um, if you guys had questions while I was working, that was kind of the theme of the day. So if anybody wanted me to cover anything specific, then ask away. I am probably going to need another washer break because I've been at this for so long. But, um, oops, I missed, I missed a whole section of stuff, you guys. No good. All right, so far, uh, so good. Now, arms for life. Uh, I just want to do coding and designing and can't, and oh, and art, hang on. Then and art and video for games and movies, but I can't, I really can't afford the cost or time for college right now. I'll get there though, yes. Pursuing free diving certification, certification soon, sweet. I need to go now. I have an oddly tired, worn out lady. Oh no, I hope you feel better. Oh, sweet. I will have to check that out afterwards. You should make it neon colors. How long has it been? It has been an hour and 46 minutes. Any tips for drawing mermaid flukes? Um, my tip for drawing mermaid flukes. Uh, let me think on that for just a sec. What would I want to say to that? Um, my big tip is like following the the streamlined flow of the of the body is kind of like my personal preference for for mermaid tail uh, sort of fluke design. There's a lot of different things that you can do. I know that like a lot of people like the the bigger mermaid flukes. I like big flukes, and I cannot lie, right? Like everyone always goes for that. So, um, but it's it is like largely just personal preference, and I think that experimenting with different shapes and not getting hung up on the very first shape that you do is also really important. I sometimes do that. I'll get hung up on the very, very first noodle or doodle that I do and I'll be like, okay, this is exactly how it has to be all the way through to the end. So trying different shapes, different silhouettes, like, and start with the silhouette. So by the silhouette, I just mean the, the outline or a shadow. Like you could even put like a splotch of paint down um, in Photoshop or in, um, sketchbook and then work it and erase around it until you come out with a shape that you like. Also like referencing existing fish, um, existing mermaid tails, what other people have done. It can be pretty hard to reinvent the wheel. Obviously don't like intentionally rip off another artist's work because that's really uncool and not very nice and uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> but seeing how other people have tackled specific problems or specific specific issues and things like this can be quite useful. Um, you know, everybody has a different way of doing something, right? So then also thinking of like the structure, taking into consideration where your monofin would sit if you're planning on turning your mermaid tail into an actual functional um, mermaid, like functional mermaid tail. Where are your toes going to be and how should you make the design to support where your feet are going to be like the tail that I'm doing now, this is not something I would have to rework this if I was actually going to stick somebody's feet in here because feet would be like right like in there. And I don't feel like this design would be as realistic as humanly mermaidingly <laughs> um, possible. You know what I mean? So most of my flukes, if I have uh, like a very obvious definition between the color of my body and the color of the fluke, like the fin, this area that I'm drawing on right now, um, I will actually have the scales come down over the area where my, my toes are going to sit. If a kid ever were to come and touch my tail, they would see it. And I could explain that it's not part of the fin, that it's like part of the body of the tail. They felt my toes and were like, oh. Now in the Luna, that's not an issue because in the Luna, you can't actually feel my toes, period, because of how awesome that monofin is. Huge freaking, freaking fan. I love the Luna so much, you guys. Um, but that being said, I still I still like to follow its line because the monofin is kind of like the bones of your tail, right? So you should be taking it into consideration when you're doing your design. So when I do designs like this, they're purely for fun, just for the aesthetic, just for an inspiration, an initial vibe, if you will, and are not necessarily indicative of what's, you know, possible. 
uh, with an actual mermaid tail. So, is that like the super convoluted long way around the <laughs> long way around the question, Courtney? What I do apparently. Uh, so yeah, I hope that kind of helped to answer that one. Thanks to Blaze for um, into teaching within a couple of years for money to support my mer ventures. That sounds awesome. That is a good way to do it, I think. Uh, thank you for the tips. You are awesome. You are most welcome. I hope you find them helpful. If you guys ever want to share with me what you're creating, be sure to follow me on Instagram and then uh, tag me or at me so I can check it out. I always love to see what you guys are up to. Now, I'm honestly not really sure what my plan of attack for this is going to be. Um, but here we go. Eh. We'll just see what happens. I haven't done a design that actually had like scales on it. So it's just kind of, kind of a little wacky, you know? I got a question in the mermaids that I'm thinking of, I'm going to use blue, but this is blue, make it invisible in the pool because it's blue. Not necessarily, if you have enough contrast, uh, and contrast meaning like light and dark uh, in your tail, you'll still be visible. Um, like I'm blue, uh, the, my hips down to my, um, no, no, not my hips, my hips are green, but my fluke and area, I actually used it to my advantage because I wanted my fluke to have a translucent um, effect in the water, and it does because um, it's a little bit hard to see, I guess. So it looks like it's a little bit see-through instead. Um, but just having a high enough level of contrast will make a huge difference. You know, colors that are, uh, you know, there's a lot of colors, actually. There was a, who posted it? I can't remember who posted it. Somebody had posted it originally. Um, showing how different colors will disappear at diff different depths based on how much light can actually reach, uh, reach it and etc. So I think red is the first to go. Um, and then it kind of makes its way, makes its way down. And it's just like, I don't know, some colors just work better than others, but I do feel like regardless of the color, if you have a high enough level of contrast where you can see that the colors stand out from each other enough, lots of lights and darks, you're still going to be, you're still going to be visible underwater. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. to help Courtney could explain more for you. What am I explaining? Uh, was there something? I guess fine. Uh, might just be hard to film in some lighting. Okay, so that was what I just, yeah, I just explained that. My tail has a lot of red, lol. <laughs> um, it just really depends. Like, it depends how deep you swim. We'll also have uh, kind of a say in how well your tail shows up and that sort of thing. So... I don't think there's going to be any color that's ever really like foolproof and just perfect. So Well, so far so good. All right. 
right. So what else are we talking about here? I'm trying to find a way to make enough money to get a silicone tail, and I think I'm close. Sweet. Yeah, silicone tails can be very expensive. Worth it for a lot of people, but can be quite pricey. And can take a long time to save up for. But if you're close, it's really exciting. Which, uh, which kind are you gonna, are you gonna aim for? Are you gonna go for, like, a Mardella? Are you gonna go for Finfo? Are you gonna go for Mer Taylor? Um, who else is out there making mermaid tails right now? Mermaid Amathea. Amathea. She makes some absolutely stunning mermaid tails. Why? Why you want to be so mean to me? There we go. All right. Have I ever thought about getting a silicone mermaid tail? Um, honestly, I have too many health issues to to really justify uh, getting a, a tail that I probably wouldn't even be able to physically swim in. So that's why I always stick to, you know, my fabric bubbles because they're they're what works best for me. So I kind of roll with it. I do think about it, wouldn't it be nice to have, you know, somebody's artwork that, you know, matches my, my tail and stuff like that, but who knows, right? I mean, maybe one day, I mean, stranger things have happened, right? So working in a lot of different layers will also uh, help you keep things kind of straight too. In terms of like keeping track of where you're at with uh, your mermaid tail. Ah oh, shoot, you know what I don't have on here though? I don't have the ability to make this eraser. Do I have a better eraser? No, I don't. You know what? I do have, though. I always feel so sticky. Sometimes you just got to get creative, you know? Okay, you know what? Here, we've got some problem solving. Watch this. We're going to turn this back on. Okay, we're going to turn this back to... Hang on. We're going to turn this to overlay. We are going to see if this will be... Haha, and it will be. We're going to go like that. We're going to go like this. Then we're going to go here, turn this back to normal. Oh, that didn't do all that I wanted it to do, but I can go in and I can go like this. Okay. Perfect. Now I can go in, I can grab this guy, and I can fade it in. Because sometimes you have to remember that you're not in Photoshop and not everything works the way that you expect it to. Very frustrating. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to stick it over here so that I don't lose my. That's not what I want. Okay, so we're almost there. I do need to just run to the washroom really quick. Drink a lot of water today, so you're going to have a little Alfie break. 
Let's let's watch Alfie eat some chicken. He has a chicken. Very <laughs> bad. You're supposed to keep them company. You're supposed to keep them company, you weirdo. You're just the worst. He's like, but Ma, you went away. Where did you go, Ma? No, you're in trouble. We're not talking now. We're not we're not talking. You're not my friend anymore, Alfie. You not my friend anymore, Alfie. Where did Alfie go? He's like, yep. See ya. <laughs> Silly guy, you're such a turd. You are, you're the worst. You have one job, Alfie, one job. Oh, but he's a good little guy. We can't be too, we can't be too mad at him, right? He's just a little dude, you know? Just a little dude being a little guy. Oops. Hey, making sure you're using the right brush is always good, and then making sure you also have symmetry turned on. There we go. All right, so how are all you little fishes doing? Are you doing good? Are you hanging in there, are you hanging in there as I attempt to, to do this? I think I am pretty happy with how this is looking. I don't think I have too much more that I want to do. So if you guys have any more questions, now is the time. Anything else you would like me to touch? I will, of course, still do, eventually I'll do a, a full um, how to design a mermaid tail tutorial you know, that's not a live stream, that's something that's actually, like, pre-planned, but for now, it's just, like, here we are, we're just, Courtney's just doing the best that she can, okay, guys? <laughs> oh, man. Did we just have one of those days? He's right back to sleep. Like, seriously? How does he do that? I wish I could be that peaceful. Like, <laughs> really and truly. The only life is that easy, right? <laughs> like, come on, Alfie. How are you doing this, little doggy? Cool. 
I think. What do you think? Am I am I a boat there? I don't know. I feel like I'm on the boat. On the boat then. I think that's like I don't know I feel like that's was a pretty good use of, of two hours and six minutes and 11 seconds I feel like that was you know here we are I've done the thing <laughs> mission accomplished uh, the tale is absolutely wonderful thank you so much um looks so pretty for you thank you what was the name of the page which page I don't think you're talking to me I don't know I'm going to get a marrow uh, fin since you asked earlier, Courtney. Sweet. That's awesome. Uh, I, have quite, I have a layer question. Does it matter which order you layer uh, you do the layers in for the final image? I see a lot of translucent in your finished product, so I was curious how it worked. Um, it just, like, it's a little different when I do layers and stuff in uh, Sketchbook versus when I do them in Photoshop. Le like how you or order your layers can make a huge difference and it depends mostly on how you plan on using them so the layer that I threw on the very very top needs to be on the very top because I want it to affect everything whereas um, the line art needs to be on top because I want it to cover specific things um, and then like I had these extra lines on top because I had some stuff to correct so it does it can be important um, I think definitely more often than not being important. Um, in your final image, like, for the very final image that I actually bring to the printer, um, I flatten it completely, so I'll actually merge all of the layers, in which case it does 100% work. I do, I'm required to have my layers in a certain place to make sure that patterns and colors and things are all showing up a certain way, so hopefully that kind of answers that question. Uh, I finally made it in one of your live streams. Welcome! Oh, so pretty. Hello, hello. Gotta go. It was fun talking to everyone. Aw, sweet. We'll see you next time. Have a good day, Courtney. Thank you. We'll see you later. It's almost gonna be lunchtime for me. I feel like I'm just finishing my breakfast now, but it's almost one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she took... <laughs> And she chokes on it. <coughs> it's my go-to move, guys. Choking on water, on shake, on water with chia seeds in it, like, my go-to move. Um, yeah, so that's done. Um, I also have, like, I've been posting a lot of these tales to, <coughs> excuse me, to DeviantArt, <coughs> and I have been getting some questions. Some of them obviously have been commissions for other uh, mermaids who have actually commissioned me to make them tales. I do actually take uh, commissions currently, so if you guys are interested in having me do one of these for you, they are 55 Canadian for something like this. Um, the mermaid tales, or the mermaids who are the full mermaids, will range depending on the complexity um and a black and white sketch is what did i say it was did i say it was 30 30 and then the full color is 55 so these guys will range in price depending on the complexity and uh the mermaid tails like this one would go for 55 and then black and white sketches which are like uh these guys and like those guys go for 30 so if you are interested in uh commission me you can head on over to my instagram and send me a dm i accept paypal currently so and if you do if you like this one and you want for some reason to buy this one this will be available as well uh, you just gotta let me know if you want it and over in dm i have some other examples as well um, i'm trying to do a few of these on the side because it kind of keeps me my creative juices kind of flowing i'm happy to design tales for uh existing like you know if you <clears throat> if you want to have it made into a silicone tail and you can use it then for whatever you'd like to use it for it can be like concept art for your upcoming mermaid tail or sort of what have you um yes so 
So I just figure I'd throw that out there. Let me know if you're interested. Again, my Instagram and everything is in the description box down below. So um, have a good rest of your day. Courtney, thank you. It is the name of this tale. Also choking is bad for your health a little bit. Um, can you compare this tale with some of your other tales for sure? So, um, so that's that one. There's a couple that I can't show just because I'm still, I'm still working on them. Uh, this was the one from, was this last week's Mermaid Tale? I'm pretty sure this was last week's Mermaid Tale. This one's already sold. Um, and, uh, I am kind of in love with this tale and I really hope that, uh, the mermaid who purchased it actually would like me to turn it into a mermaid tale for them, uh, possibly next year. So I'm kind of excited about that because I would really love to revisit this and make it swimmable it would be really cool. So that was one of them. Um, I could show that was for obviously for an example for something else. Um, that was jellyfish tail for a while back. This is one that I quite like. This is for uh, commissioned for um, the mermaid seamstress who uh, had another tail. This is kind of like if I had no limitations, what I would have done with a tail for her. Um, so it's based off of her lily pad uh, tail that I made for her. And I was just kind of exploring some different different shapes and different options. Uh, here were two more that I designed for clients. These are actually all for clients. This one wasn't. This was for a live stream. Um, I'm quite happy with like, uh, let me show you, this is this, one of the sketches that I did that I quite like. This sort of like, it's almost like a graphic kind of coloring book kind of page, and I will be coming out with a coloring book that is also on my to-do list. I have so many things like on my to-do list, you guys, it's crazy. Um, this was one of the first colored ones that I did as a commission, and I am kind of in love with this one just a tiny bit. I really love it. I feel like I was basing it off of her fish, and... I don't know, I just feel like it's so glowy and like ethereal or something. I don't know, it just makes me so happy. And uh, I think this was the first one that was commissioned for me, or not for me, like of me, from me. I made it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying now, it's crazy. Um, I had a lot of fun, I wanted it to feel like fabric kind of coming down, like even maybe the, like the, the fins and stuff were a little bit fabric really happy with how this one turned out um yeah i have a lot of other ones that i've done like for different live streams and things uh so pretty much like anything is possible <laughs> anything is possible if uh you know you're interested in me having a tail design for you i am happy to um you know i'm also happy to do like the full outfits and stuff like this will again take a second too uh that was the haunted mansion tail yes I love that design so much. Same, I'm broke. I, well, I know the feeling. That's why I'm offering to do these. I'm actually broke and we have to replace some stuff in our apartment. We had some leaks and things like that. So I know the feels. I really do. So don't feel bad if you can't like afford it or whatever. Just maybe share it with your friends or something and let people know. I don't know. Um, but I am happy to design full on like costumes, like the wig with the, with the whole look all together kind of be like. So um, this one, there will be... Um, a video coming out for this actually on Friday, so I won't show you too, too much just now. Uh, but otherwise, there isn't a uh, tag here that you remember that Insta. Oh, sweet. Okay, I will have to go check it out. Awesome. One thing at a time. Thing to do with scare me, me too. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so all that being said, that's going to be the end of today's live stream. I want to thank you guys so, so much for coming out. Um, supporting me and checking out what I'm doing mermaid tail wise. Again, this was the the final image and uh, that's where I'm gonna leave you so I will not be live streaming again this week I have two more videos coming out this week Thursday and Friday we'll both have new videos and um, yeah if you guys don't want to say goodbye just yeah be sure to swim on over to patreonpod.com our extended pod community for as little as a dollar a month you gain access to somebody sending me messages while I'm trying to live stream thank you very much for that um, you gain access to our monthly mermaid tail coloring challenge. So if you do enjoy watching me do these, I actually will save. There was one that you kind of may have seen a little sneak peek of. Um, I make coloring pages for my patrons to do for as little as a dollar a month. You gain access to that, as well as there's a lot of other behind the scenes features, the behind the scenes feed, the private chat, the whole nine. So be sure to check that out. That was again at patreonpod.com and we would love to have you join us. And as always, I want to thank you guys so, so much for coming out, hanging out with me for these, what has it been, two hours? It's been two hours of awesomeness with the pod, and I love you all so much. And I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Okay, my little fishes, have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you all again soon. All right, happy swimming. Bye.
<laughs> All right, stop streaming. <laughs> Bye, guys.